So, welcome back and this is lecture number 41, we will be talking about the spanning set. So, to define the vector space, we need to prepare for, for many uh, concepts and this is one of them, so called the spanning set. And here we will be talking about the linear span first and then we will be talking about a uh, spanning uh, set. So, what is the linear span? So, linear span of vectors of given vectors uh, v 1, v 2, v 3, v n, this is defined as uh, and uh, usually we de uh, de denote as a span of this v 1, v 2, v 3, v n and we define as the set of all these linear combinations of uh, these vectors v 1, v 2, v 3, uh, v n. So, here exactly this is the linear combination given lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 and lambda n v n. So, this is the linear combination of the vectors and this lambda belongs to the set of uh, real number. So, this is a set of uh, all linear combinations of the given uh, vectors we call the span of uh, v 1 v 2 v 3 v n. Exactly. So, the collection of all linear combinations is called the linear span of the vectors v 1, v 2, v 3, v n. And the problem here we will discuss now is this vector 1 0 0 uh, transpose just uh, uh, to, to tell that this is, a, uh, this is a column vector, but we can do also with the, the row vectors. So, here is the vector here in the span of the vectors 4, 2, 7 and 3, 1, 4. So, what do we need to check basically uh, can we write this vector as a linear combination of these two vectors because this is the question here that is this vector in the span of the vectors of this. So, what is the span of these vectors? All linear combinations of these two vectors and to check whether this is this belongs to this span of this uh, these vectors or not we will just check whether this vector is a linear combination of, of these two vectors uh, or not. So, we need to basically check, uh, we need to find the lambda 1 and lambda 2 such that the lambda 1, this vector 4 to 7 plus lambda 2, the another vector here 3 1 4 will give us 1 0 0 whether this is possible to find such lambdas or this is not possible the system here is inconsistent or it is a consistent system which can uh, give us the lambda uh, 1 and lambda 2. So, to answer this again we have to uh, get back to this uh, the idea of the augmented matrix and the row reduced uh, echelon form again just note that this row reduced echelon form is very important uh, almost in all lectures we will be. Uh, utilizing the idea of this uh, solving the system of equations using Gauss elimination or rather uh, saying this uh, reducing to this row reduced echelon form because once we have this row reduced echelon form we can tell exactly that uh, what type of solution we are getting out of this given system. So, here we have this is the uh, augmented matrix. So, our equations are like 4 lambda 1 plus 3 lambda 2 is equal to 1, the second equation 2 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to 0, the third equation 7 lambda 1 plus 4 lambda 2 is equal to 0. So, out of it we have written this uh, augmented matrix, the coefficient matrix here 4, 3, 2, 1, 7, 4 and then this right hand side vector which is 1, 0, 0. Uh, now, we need to reduce it to the uh, row reduced echelon form and that idea is also we have explained several times we, we need to make this element 0 then this element 0 with the help of this e equation number 1 and then uh, we need to make this element 0 with the help of the equation number 2. So, that doing so I am writing directly here what will be the reduced uh, echelon form. So, 4, 3, 1 and then 0 here 1, 1 and 0, 0, 2. So, this is the row reduce uh, echelon form and from here now we can conclude because this is now our the first column has has a pivot element, the second column has also the pivot element and but the problem here is uh, with the consistency of the equation. The last equation says that 0 is equal to 2. 
which is not possible, which is not possible here. That means, we cannot solve this system, we cannot solve this system for, for lambda 1 and lambda 2. There is no solution, because our equations are inconsistent. So, we cannot get any solution of this given a uh, system of equations and therefore, uh, the, the answer to this question is that uh, this vector 1 0 0 does not lie in this span of uh, the vectors 4 2 7 and 3 2 4. So, here the system is incons inconsistent and uh, we cannot write down the as, as linear combination hmm, given there. So, there is another uh, nice result here, we will not go through the formal proof, but we will uh, see at least uh, some intuition how this is happening. So, if S is a subset of a vector space V, then this is span S. Yeah? So, what is span S? All the linear combinations of the vectors that is the span S uh, is a subspace of V and what is the nice property this span, span S has. So, we take any two, uh, any vectors a collection of vectors and then the span of this will give you the vector space. So, this span S is a subspace meaning this is a vector space of this V, the subspace of V uh, whose elements we have taken uh, as the subset and this is the smallest uh, another important information that this is the smallest subspace uh, which contains this set S. So, there cannot be uh, any smaller subset uh, of this which contains S and is a vector space. So, this is the smallest uh, vector space containing the set of vectors. So, just to, to see the, the idea of the proof here. So, we take uh, let us say this is our set S which contains V 1, V 2, V 3, V n. These are the elements of this S and what we will uh, show that the span of this S is a, is a vector space is a vector space of V. So, for showing the vector space, we need to show those two properties because we are talking about the subspace here. We need to absolutely show those two properties, the closer properties. That means, you take any two elements of this uh, set and their vector addition should also belong to the same set and also when we multiply this set by a number, uh, a scalar number. Uh, that the new uh, element should also belong to this uh, set S. So, here let us suppose this u and v, they belong to this span uh, S and now, because uh, u belongs to this span S and v belongs to this span S. So, we can write down this u and v as a linear combination of, of the vectors v's. So, here the u is written as a linear combination of the v i's vector lambda i's v i's. So, this is a linear combination. Here also the v we have written as a linear combination of the vector v's. Note that this lambdas and this mu's will be different and they are the scalars, but uh, this u uh, is another vector. So, this is a linear combination, a different linear combination. Here v is another vector. So, we have a different linear combination there. So, these two vectors which we have taken from the span s, uh, they must be uh, the linear combination of the v's. And now, if we add them, so u plus v, if we add them, so what will happen when we add them, this will be lambda i's plus mu i and this uh, the v i. So, again this is a linear combination of the v i's, because when lambda i's and mu i's are real, their sum is also a real number. So, we have again this as a linear combination. So, this will also belong to to span S, because the span S contains all linear combination of the V i's and this is a linear combination. So, definitely this will also belong to uh, the span S. And uh, another property, the closer property, what we check uh, when we multiply by any, um, any constant, uh, any scalar, like here we have taken the C as a scalar. So, if we multiply uh, this uh, C, to this uh, vector uh, u, then what we will get? We will get, uh, so here this c not lambda i. So, when we uh, write down this uh, 
u because u is a linear combination yeah well, well right, correct so this u is a linear combination so which we have already written here u is written as uh, the lambda i v i and when we multiply by a constant here c by a scalar c then what will happen the c lambda i into into v i so this c lambda i when we have multiplied this scalar c here to lambda i that is another real number and this is a, another uh, linear combination of V i. So, once we have this linear combination and all the linear combinations belongs to this span s. So, this element will also belong to span s. So, what we have seen here the closer properties are satisfied that means, this span s is a vector subspace. So, span s is a vector subspace and what else we need to, to show that uh, that any subspace uh, containing the element of s is also uh, that set will also contain a span s and the reason is clear because this is span s contains all the linear combinations. So, if you have a suppose you consider a vector space you we have a vector space for in, instance which contains this set s here. So, definitely because if this is a vector space let us say w is a vector space which contains s. So, definitely because uh, because this is a vector space all the uh, all, all, all linear combinations because when we add two elements of this must be there. So, eventually uh, all the linear combinations must be there in this set w that means, this will also have a uh, span s and that itself tell us that uh, span s is the smallest subspace which contains uh, this s because anything uh, else which contains s will also contain this span s. So, it cannot be that this is not the smallest uh, subspace. So, what we have learned here that uh, this is span uh, s, the span s you, you take any vectors from a vector space and uh, having this span of uh, this uh, these vectors that will form a, a vector subspace of that uh, vector v. And there is another one this is called spanning set. So, what is the spanning set? The set here v 1, v 2, v 3, v n is set to form a spanning set of vector space v. So, we will call that this is a spanning set of this vector v. If for any v, if we take any element from that vector space v, then there will exist a scalars this alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n such that we have v is equal to uh, this linear combination of these. Uh, v's here. So, basically we call that this is a spanning set of a vector space v if any element of this vector space we can write down as a linear combination of uh, this given set v or in other words uh, which we have written here the vectors v 1, v 2, v n in v are set to span v if every v in v is a linear combination of the vectors v 1, v 2, v 3, v n. So, this spanning set is very important. Once we have the spanning set basically we can write down any vector of that uh, vector space in terms of these given or as a linear combination of these given vectors. So, the example here we are considering the vectors 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 this form a spanning set of R 3 meaning what we have to show that if we take any element of this R 3 any element of this R 3 then we must be able to write down as a linear combination of these three vectors and that is what we mean the spanning set. So, let us check whether how this 1 0 0 0 1 0 and uh, 0 0 1 uh, form a spanning set for uh, the vector space R 3. So, for any vector, so we take a general vector this v 1, v 2, v 3 which we have denoted uh, by this v 1, v 2, v 3 that can be any vector from uh, R 3 we are not restricting anything on v 1, v 2, v 3 they can be any real number meaning that this uh, vector belongs to this R 3 and it is a general vector yeah it can it can be any vector from this R 3 and what we will what we are supposed to do now we will show that this vector which is a general vector from this R 3 without any restriction. So, any vector from R 3 we can write down as a linear combination of 
of these given vectors and why this is trivial in this case. This is v 1, v 2, v 3 and the structure this is called the uh, later on we will come up with another uh, name that is called the standard uh, vectors or rather standard basis which we, we will refer later on this these terminologies. So, here we have 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. We, what we need to do? We, we need to just multiply this first vector by the number v 1, the second one v 2 and the third one v 3. And as we see clearly, this is the first component here v 1, here we have 0 0. So, basically this will add to v 1. The second one here 0 and there 0 only the v 2 uh, will be coming up and in the third one when we add only the v 3 will be coming up. So, this any vector of this vector space R 3 we can write down as a linear combination of this uh, these vectors 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 which uh, uh, was trivial uh, to see in this particular case. Another uh, example we will be talking about uh, these vectors here 1 1 0 and uh, 1 1 uh, no, trip, uh, all 1 here. So, 1 1 1 and we have 1 1 0 and we have taken here 1 0 0 and this also form a spanning set of this R 3. How this forms a spanning set? So, we have seen already one example where the vectors were taken as 1 0 0 and 0 1 0 and this 0 0 1. This is another set and then again we are claiming that this form a spanning set of this R 3. So, naturally this spanning set is not unique yeah we can have a we can have a different set of vectors and that span the, the same vector space. So, here this is another example where we will see that this set can also span R 3 that means any element of this R 3 we can write down as a linear combination of these three vectors. To see this we will take uh, a general vector here v 1, v 2, v 3 from this R 3 and we will try to write down this v 1, v 2, v 3 as a linear combination of the given vectors meaning that lambda 1 times this first vector lambda 2, second vector lambda 3, the third vector. Now, the question is can we write down as a linear combination here because here is not as trivial to see as the earlier case though this is also uh, not difficult. So, what do we do? We again we will solve these uh, three equations the system of equations. The first equation is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3, the second equation is lambda 1 plus lambda 2, third equation is just the lambda 1 is equal to v 3. So, without indeed uh, reducing to this row uh, reduce echelon form we can directly also solve this equation we do not have to do that because the th this equation the third equation tells that lambda 1 is equal to v 3. So, from here uh, itself we get direct answer that lambda 1 is equal to v 3. Now, we will take the second equation which uh, tells us that this lambda 1 and plus lambda 2 is equal to v 2. So, from here we will get this lambda 2 as v 2 minus v 3. So, the second equation will give lambda 2 as v 2 minus v 3 and from this equation number 1 which is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 is equal to v 1. So, lambda 3 will be v 1 minus uh, this lambda 1 which is uh, v 3 minus lambda 2 which is here uh, given as uh, this is lambda 2 and this is lambda 1 and this was the right hand side. So, from this first equation we got that lambda 3 is equal to v 1 and minus this v 2. So, here also we got the v 1. So, here the lambda 1 is, is just the v 3, the lambda 2 we need to take uh, v 2 uh, minus this v 3 and this lambda 3 we need to take v 1 minus v 2. So, we got this linear combination here that this any vector v 1, v 2, v 3 we can write down as a linear combination of these given vectors uh, in the form that v 3 the first vector, v 2 minus v 3 the second vector and v 1 minus v 2 this third vector. So, again we have seen in this example that this was a different set here from uh, than the earlier example, but again this is also a spanning set of this R 3. So, what we have now? 
we have this example number 3 where we will show now we have taken from the previous example yeah so these vectors 111 110 and 100 these are from the previous example and we have taken one more that 100 uh, 101 so we have added one more vector here now our set here is bigger and now again this also forms a spanning set of r3 that is what we will observe now so the existing set and we have added one more this vector 101 and this is also forming a spanning set. So, you can have really a, a different number of elements in the spanning set exactly I mean quite different uh, elements also in the in the in the set. So, here we will check how this forms a spanning set. So, for any general vector v1, v2, v3 what we have to again consider this linear combination that whether we can write down this v1, v2, v3 as a linear combination of these four vectors. So, we have these four lambdas now lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 plus lambda 4. So, we have again three equations, but there are four unknowns, unknowns are these lambdas and we have the three equations. Uh, uh, the first equation is this uh, sum of all these lambdas is equal to v1, the second one lambda 1 plus lambda 2 uh, is equal to v2 and from the third equation we have uh, lambda 1 uh, plus lambda 4 is equal to v3. So, having these three equations and then uh, four unknowns we will again uh, set up this um, uh, augmented matrix. So, our augmented matrix now here the, these columns uh, will be these vectors here 111, 10 and 100 and 101 with the right hand side v1, v2 and this v3. So, this uh, augmented matrix we can reduce it to this uh, echelon form which uh, is I believe very simple again. So, here this is the first will remain as it is v1 and then here we will make it 0. So, we'll subtract row 1. So, this is also 0, this is minus 1, minus 1 and then we have v 2 minus 1. Here again we will subtract that. So, we will get this 0 and v 3 minus this v 1. So, and now we can exchange these two rows and eventually we will get yeah this uh, row reduced form. So, we have this reduced form here. Uh, and now, what we will observe out of this reduced form whether we can get such lambdas or we cannot get such lambdas now. So, uh, getting again back to this pivot element. So, the first column has a pivot, second column has also a pivot element and the third column also has a pivot element. So, we have the three pivot elements and here, here we do not have this pivot element. This is not the pivot element. So, this lambda corresponding to this 4. So, lambda 4 is a free variable right. So, lambda 4 is a free variable and all other lambdas will depend on this choice of this lambda 4. So, what do we get now? So, the question is uh, the, the answer to this question is that we do have such lambdas which will add up to uh, this v 1, v 2, v 3 and indeed now in this case we have we have many choices. We have many choices for these lambdas to give this v1, v2, v3. In fact, this there is it is not unique now, this representation is not unique. While in the earlier cases, one can closely observe when uh, doing this uh, echelon form. So, what we will get, we will not get this column, for instance, if we consider just with these three examples. So, we will get these, every column will have a pivot here and that will be equal to the number of uh, these unknowns, the number of lambdas in that case and we will get a unique representation. So, the in earlier example when we did not have this uh, vector there, we have the uh, unique representation of the of this v1, v2, v3 in terms of the given vectors, but what happened now in this case, we do not have a unique representation, but we can represent it, we can uh, we can uh, write down any vector from this R 3 in terms of these given four vectors. So, indeed this is a spanning set, the only difference from the earlier example to this uh, example here is that that we have a non unique representation that uh, we have to choose now uh, lambda 4 and then compute lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. 
we have basically infinitely many solutions now. So, this is a non-unique representation. In the first two examples, we have a unique representation. So, that was the difference here and now in this case, we have a non-unique representation. Coming back to this example 4, uh, we will see that again we have 3 vectors here 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 5 and 1, 5, 9. These are 3 different vectors. So, but they do not span R 3. In example 1 and example 2, we have 3 vectors and they span R 3 means any vector of R 3 we are uh, we can write down in terms of those given uh, vectors. So, in the example 1 we have uh, this 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 set here 1 uh, 0 0 and uh, 0 1 0 and then we had 0 0 1. So, th these were the 3 vectors from example 1. Example 2 I guess it was uh, 1 1 1 and then 1 1 0 and then we had 1 0 0. So, this was from uh, example number 2. So, with this though they have the 3 different elements from R 3, where they span they span R 3 means any element of R 3 we can write down in terms of these vectors or in terms of these vectors. But now, in this case what we will observe that this is not possible that you take any 3 elements from R 3 and that will form the spanning set. How to check this? We will take a general vector here V 1 V 2 V 3 as usual and we will try to uh, write down this V 1 V 2 V 3 in terms of the lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. So, lambda 1 with the first vector, lambda 2 with the second vector and lambda 3 with this uh, third vector 1, 5, 9. So, writing this in terms of the lambdas, we have uh, the, uh, the augmented matrix here now, the coefficient matrix. So, this 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 5 and 1, 5, 5, the right hand side here are V 1, V 2 and V 3. We need to reduce to the echelon form. So, we can make this 0 by multiplying this 2 times and then subtracting here to 0 and then we will get here uh, 1 and then here we will get 3 and then v 2 minus this 2 v 1 and then again uh, we have to also do this manipulation uh, later uh, for this case. So, just to give you the idea the first row we have this one the second one the 2 times of this we will subtract. So, this is 0, this is 1, 2 times. So, here we will get 3 and this will be 2 times minus uh, v 2 minus 2 v 1. The third one uh, 3 times or r 1 we are subtracting. So, here the 2 and the 3. So, here we will get uh, 6 and here v 3 minus 3 v 1. And then once again uh, this 2 times of this we will subtract. So, this will become 0, this will also become 0 and here this factor will be coming. So, this is the row reduced echelon form which we uh, got here 1 1 0 and 0 1 3 and 0 0 0. So, now what do we observe in this case that here we have pivot, here also we have a pivot and thus uh, forget about the pivot, we have the inconsistency here. Why inconsistency? Because f this v 1, v 2, v 3, these are, they, they, they can be any real number because our vector here is from R 3 and say any arbitrary vector from R 3. So, having so, we cannot, we cannot just uh, uh, observe that this will be 0, this will be a non-zero number as well in many uh, situation and then 0 is equal to something non-zero we are getting. So, this system we cannot solve for general v 1, v 2, v 3 from R 3 that means the system is inconsistent and hence we cannot write down in this case as a linear combination of uh, these given vectors. So, what we have observed that the just the number is not important that we have taken uh, here 3 elements from R 3 in this in the third example we have taken 4 uh, elements from R 3 in first 2 examples we have taken again only 3 elements. In the first 2 cases we had a unique representation for a given vector from R 3 in terms of the given vectors. 
in the in the in the third example where we have taken four that was also a spanning set but there we were getting non unique representations of a given vector from r3 and now in this example though we have three vectors from r3 but they are not uh, sufficient to represent uh, a general element or a general vector from r3 so this does not form a spanning set of R3. So, there is a lot more to discuss on this spanning set and that will uh, follow uh, in, the, in, the, in the next lectures. Here the conclusion is that this linear span is nothing but all the uh, all linear combinations of the given vectors and the spanning set uh, which v1, v2, vn of v we will call that this is a spanning set if any vector of this v we can uh, represent in the form of uh, these vector v's then we call that this is a spanning set. So, these are the references used for preparing these lectures and uh, thank you very much for your attention.